hi everybody, Alex Goff here, and this video is brought to you by our sponsors, Irish Rugby Tours, who can put together exactly the right tour that you want to go to Ireland, places in Europe, Southern Hemisphere, wherever you need to go, they will match up, you up with uh, great experiences uh, and uh, a team bonding experience and coaching and also really competitive games. So check out irishrugbytours.com. Also brought to you by our supporters, our Patreon patrons, and our anonymous patrons who give money to Golf Rugby Report just to make sure that we can do stuff like these videos that go out everywhere, and we're really appreciative of that. Also brought to you by the U.S. Rugby Foundation that uh, supports grassroots rugby throughout the country. And you always talk about the things, you know what we need to do? We need to uh, get seed money for our new high school program. U.S. Rugby Foundation does all of that stuff, so donate to them. It really does help the game. And by Next Phase Rugby, which connects young high school rugby players with collegiate programs so they can find the right place for them to go to college and play some rugby. All right, so we are talking about the MLR draft, and really, I don't think I've made a secret of the fact I'm not actually a massive fan of the draft. I, I mean, it, and, and that's a little bit simplistic to say that. Um, the draft organizes how they get college players into Major League Rugby, and there's not a free-for-all. That's a good thing. But I would say that for the vast majority of the players that we're talking about, they're probably better off getting through the draft and not being drafted. There's certainly a prestige feeling to being drafted high, but if you're not drafted at all, then you get to choose the team that you can go to. So it actually turns out to be a little bit better rather than being told, hey, you're moving across the country uh, for a contract that, let's face it, doesn't pay a lot of money, especially, and uh, you know, we've got a lot of teams based in relatively expensive cities. So, um, uh, yeah, it can be difficult. So uh, the draft, understand it, but really, in a way, you're kind of hoping that you go through those three rounds and then you get to pick and choose. <laughs> So what we're looking for in prop is we're looking for players who can handle themselves physically, get around the park. Now, I will say there are a lot of props in the MLR draft. There are about 20, really, and there are very good ones. And I'm going to say this about every position. If I don't mention you, it's not because I don't think you're a good player. In fact, there are a lot of good players here, but we just got to pick a few. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. So number one, I want to talk about Liam Smith from Lindenwood. Australian guy, very experienced. He basically can do all the things you need him to do. He's a smart player, a physical, powerful. Uh, so yeah, uh, I like the looks of Liam Smith. Ivan Pula uh, coming out of Central Washington. Uh, full disclosure, used to play for my old club back in Olympia, Washington. Uh, used to be a number eight, uh, as a lot of these players are, and they get moved on to a more uh, logical position as they go on. Uh, this guy uh, can move around the field, and I think that that's one of his real uh, assets. He can handle the scrum, he can handle himself in tight, but boy, it's mobility. Denver Fat from University of Victoria in Canada, the British Columbian. Uh, he is very well-rounded. He can tackle, he can steal ball, he can clog up the middle, uh, and he's extremely mobile. So it seems like I'm picking mobile uh, props, and I think this is what... I end up looking at is players who are big and strong, certainly powerful, they look the part, but then they, they put it out on the field and then they add that ability to get around the field. So they're not just one big push and then they take a breather for two minutes. Uh, they get up and they do more and more things. This guy does that. James Kuahuanui from Iowa Central Community College. It's always interesting when the uh, Iowa Central guy comes in because uh, have they had enough time? Uh, really liked him actually, and 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 he acts a lot like a uh, an extra loose forward out in open play. He does love to post the ball. He can still scrum. He can still hit hard. Uh, so I like him a lot. Alex Balladeris from Queens University Charlotte, good, well-rounded player, and uh, we've got a couple of Queens players in there, and 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 I just I just like the idea of watching his video and watching how he's played, how he understands how the game flows. So there's that, and then finally uh, Gabe Kettering out of Lindenwood, another former number eight, really loves to uh, power in a scrum, and he's really the sort of guy you just get him in the middle, in the middle of people and watch him be a people mover. 
So there are plenty of other players who are really, really liked. And um, I, I don't, you know, if I get bogged down in doing the honorable mention, things like that, then, then you know, we're going to be naming everybody. So I'm going to pick one player sort of out of left field. I'm just curious to see how he goes. Uh, um, Eric Jones out of Illinois State. I really like him. Uh, I, I think they're probably going to put him in the gym and get him to, you know, add a little bit more muscle. He's a big guy, but I think um, there's that profile, so we'll see how he does with that. But he didn't get picked up for that uh, um, Major League Rugby All-Star select bowl game thing. Um, but he's a very powerful player and a good leader as well and a smart rugby guy. So it would be interesting to see if... Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to get drafted, but he gets through there and then he hooks up with somebody. Um, and you'll, you'll hear this theme through all of these as we wrap it up. One thing we can't really measure, we can watch it a little bit, we can see maybe a little bit of it, but overall we can't measure desire. So if somebody comes in and they have the desire to battle and work hard, and we've seen it, we'll see how much these players have, but that's our top group for props. He really the most pedigreed and best hooker in this group, Jack Manzo, out of the University of California. Xavier High School product uh, in New York, uh, went to the other coast to play for Cal, and really has been a standout for Cal for a long time. And Manzo has been in the, the conversation in terms of really good young hookers uh, for, for about five years, six, seven, maybe even seven years. Uh, excellent player. Uh, he does the basics absolutely right. He can scrum. He can throw in the line out. He can uh, form and make that w mall work. He can defend in the mall, defend in tight, but he gets around the park. He reads the game very well. He defends very well. Koi Koi Nelligan. Okay, what to say about this guy? Um, he played number six for West Point, first of all, so there's a question mark there. Um, he's not super huge, but he's fit, physically strong, really a lot of desire. Uh, I like him a lot, and he's, he says, I'm a hooker now, right? I mean, if I'm going into pro, I'm a hooker. What is he doing uh, going into the draft when he's a West Point grad? Well, guess what? U.S. Army has uh, allowed couple of players to defer their military service while they pursue a pro rugby dream. So uh, Nelligan uh, is one of two players out of West Point who will be doing that uh, this season. Um, he, Nelligan is definitely more of the smaller, scrappier, grafter, mobile guys uh, rather than a third prop. All right, another Lindawood guy here, and this one is very versatile, Renato Brenog. A bit of a renaissance man, really. He's like a piano player and a chef and probably a secret agent as well. But uh, he really can do it all as a hooker, understands his role. And uh, you know, we did the video talking about what you should do on your highlight videos and we actually did see him throw. So that's nice. So that's uh, Renaco. Kyle Sikora out of Bowling Green. Like him a lot. I, it's going to be tough, right? Coming out of D1AA, it's not the same level. It's going to be a big jump. I think Sikora... It has that desire we talked about of the idea that players who, well, they're just going to put everything into it and see if it works. And uh, so Sikora be an interesting pick for uh, a major league rugby team. And finally, we look at Caleb Boleyn, another player who played a little bit of flanker. He's small, uh, but you can get away with it if you get someone whose work rate is off the charts. His intelligence and work rate is right there. The desire, I think, is there. He has to have all of those things working because he's not super big. It'll be interesting to see how he uh, works out. If he gets a look, if they bring him into camp, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised, but it's tough to get that look when you look at the metrics sometimes. And sit down. <laughs> Now it's time for the locks. Well, top of the list is probably Sam Gala, a, a player who is really, really close to getting the Schultz Award this year as the best collegiate player in the nation. Second row from Cal, out of Denver East. And uh, he can do all of the things, and he's a, a leader as well. Uh, he can be an emotional leader. So a lot of boxes ticked from Gala, including the body profile and the height, which you want, you want that line-out power. 
Jace Jones, he's been in the conversation for a while. St. Mary's, and and really, uh, while you look at Gala as a 4-5, Jones is probably more like 5-6. So Jones can certainly play almost anywhere in the back five in the pack. I, I probably wouldn't put him at seven, but I mean, he could probably do it. Uh, a lot of mobility, a lot of understanding of the game. He's been uh, in age grades for a while, really talented uh, player, and uh, um, I, I think if they, somebody brings him in there, they, they might be surprised. Matt Gelhaus uh, cuts down line out, line out, line out, definitely the line out, powerful in the scrum. Another one that's been in things like the, the Eagle Impact and the, the age grade uh, area for a while. Um, he knows what he's doing. Colin Gross out of the U.S. Military Academy. So there's your second player who gets that deferment of his um, military service while he goes and pursues this pro rugby dream. Uh, I watched him play in, uh, at Queen's University Charlotte uh, in the spring, and I really I sat up and said, who's that? Who's that? Because um, we, I've been talking about a lot of other names, and, and Gross's name had not really come up. And uh, he puts in a ton of work. Really good with uh, the block kicks on those uh, box kicks, which is an important skill to have. Can handle the line out. Uh, loves his defense. Ben Newhook out of UVic in uh, British Columbia, 6'5", 240. Uh, one of the taller guys in the list. Uh, great frame. He's been in the, the age grade programs for a long time. He understands what he's doing. But I think a lot of uh, teams are just going to look at the stats, say 6'5", and plays at UVic. Let's have a look. And finally, out of Georgetown, Ali Taha Brown. So this is another one where it's Georgetown. Uh, not the level of competition most would expect, right? Division two, can he make the jump up? He's originally from England. He was a uh, captain and a president of the club, uh, just really involved in it. And, and um, I always think back to the, the old quote, actually, the football quote from uh, John Madden when he was a football player. He said, uh, strike me down if I ever sign a dumb football player. And here, I, you do look for brains. You do look for intelligence because you need someone to be fluid and uh, able to adjust to a completely new environment. Brown could be that guy. Could be a sleeper. So I've lumped the flankers, the blindside flankers, and the open side flankers together. Uh, I, I'm going to give you a five, I think, I've got on my list. Yeah, five. It really, I feel like there's one and then four really good ones, but there's one at the top. Marna Spannenberg from Lindenwood. Guy's a great leader, really intelligent, and uh, just puts in a ton of work. Very physical, really good over the ball. All the stuff you need from a flanker. I actually think he could go in at lock. He'd probably be all right. Uh, he certainly could do eight. Certainly could do anywhere in the back row. Uh, I, I think he is a good possibility uh, for, uh, for a draft. And actually, actually like first couple of rounds. Joseph O'Brien out of Ohio State. I don't know, this is a bit of a shaky one. In uh, Nothing against uh, O'Brien. Fantastic player, fantastic young player. But uh, um, out of Ohio State, he's kind of this rangy guy. He's a little bit scrawny. He's one of those things you look at him and say, you know, I mean, is he big and strong and everything? But he actually, he's one of those scrawny guys who just is not going to be beaten. Kind of like that Ian Jones uh, profile, Ian Jones, the former All Black great, somebody, somebody like that. I think he can get a lot of work done. Wahid Hamidi out of the University of Ottawa. Last year I was high on him. Very quick, very interesting uh, talent because I think he's more of an offensive player for you uh, on flanker, which is fine. Owen Rattan from uh, UBC in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Played for Canada under 20s, very versatile, can uh, can actually play center, I, th I think, and I'm going from memory here, I'm pretty sure I've seen him play a little bit of center, but he can run, he can get out in the open field, that's for certain, and uh, he could also play in tight as a, uh, as a flanker. Uh, I think defensively, uh, that's, uh, that's one of his biggest strengths. I'd also take a look at Mark Matuku, uh, a good leader and a tall, athletic, smart flanker coming out of Notre Dame College, uh, Kenyan, uh, and, and they're Often it's a question about whether you want to devote a foreigner spot to a, a young player, a young, relatively unproven player. I think Matuko is one of those players, you know he's going to stick around, you know he's really heavily invested, he's, he's 
uh, uh, just a cursory look at how he plays and how he puts himself together. Uh, he's he's heavily invested in the game in the United States. I think he's sticking around. So then you're only devoting one or two years to uh, having a foreigner player before his residency uh, changes his eligibility. So uh, could be a good pickup. Michael McNeil out of Central Florida. He's I think, played some number eight as well. He's really more of a nose for the try line kind of guy. And and again, we're coming from D1AA in a, in a conference that didn't really play outside its region. So what are we going to see here? Is this somebody who come in and just be a baller, which is what he needs to do? And uh, probably won't get drafted. I don't think so. I'd, I'd be surprised if he got drafted uh, in the three rounds. And so then he's looking around, you know, that would be sort of a... Uh, a rugby ATL uh, 404 Academy type signing would be a pretty good one. You suddenly see him just rack up the tries. Now the number eight pool is weird because there are only six of them that I had really as, as, as true number eights. Um, Tomas Casares from Thomas More. Again, we're going all the way from Division Two all the way up, but we saw him at that... Uh, pre-draft all-star game and and he showed he can he still knows what he's doing uh still he he's not any shorter when he <laughs> plays at the higher level uh so he's got a lot to recommend him especially that he's he's really useful in the line out and he's a good leader lewis millet from bishops university in canada and one thing that really struck me is how in his highlight video he emphasized defense and he's a very good defender uh, and, and I would just sort of say, yeah, here's a guy who wants to play defense. If we want him to run the ball, fine, well, I'll run the ball. Why don't we just have him hit rucks and make tackles? Noam Torin from Wheeling University, really interesting talent here because this is kind of a sidesteppy, elusive kind of player, not super tall. But He's listed as USA and France eligible. What confuses me is that uh, this past year he was listed by Wheeling University as a freshman. Uh, you're not supposed to be able to be drafted if you're a freshman in college. So um, question marks for me. Maybe it's all been vetted and it's fine. Question marks for me. Neil Moylet out of Lindenwood. I'm not going to say too much about it. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's just testing the waters here. I think he's back at Lindenwood next year. So he's probably not going to get drafted. Anybody uh, makes any inquiries, I'll probably find out that he's sort of on the fence. I uh, just want to s s see maybe what the process is like. So great player. Look for him next year. And then two guys uh, I was going to talk about at the same time, Nolan Buckley and Noah Mills from UMass Lowell and Citadel. Again, two Division II players who scored a lot of tries, kind of dominated their games at times, and are big, physical, uh, tough players, but they're coming out of Division II. I think they're interesting, and I think we might see them on an academy thing. I think it's going to be hard for them to be drafted, but keep an eye on uh, what the talk is about them, because we may see them again.